Yes, indeed. Uh, we will get back to the NSAS matter uh, as we progress on the program here today. But as you've seen there, we've got two gentlemen joining us this morning uh, to focus on developments in Imo State politically. Declan Emelumba is a commissioner for information for Imo State. Uh, we will also have Colin Soporuza, who is the publicity secretary of the PDP in Imo State. Gentlemen, good morning and thank you for coming out. Good morning and thank you for having me. Well, it is a political season in the state, so uh, much as elections in the states will be coming up much later for the governorship. So, w w what is the environment, the atmosphere, politically speaking, now? How does it feel in the state? We know that there's been several comments here and there about you know developments and what's going on. How is it at the moment then? Well, I think uh, so far. Imo is come and uh, we are recording uh, progress every day and uh, the people are happy with the government. But I want to, to say, in as an opening uh, remark, that one of the reasons why I opted to come for this program, you know I opted to come, because I watched the program last uh, this, uh, this week, sometime, I think Tuesday or so, where my very good friend, uh, uh, Rea Manzere Manga, was on the program and I think that he didn't respect the truth, and I need to clarify a few things as a matter of starting. First of all, you know, he claimed that uh, uh, in the election that produced uh, Right Honorable making Hedio as the governor, he claimed that uh, in uh, Bombise, he said that to your hearing here, that what uh, PDP scored is 20,000. That's very, very far from the truth. What they returned it was 64,000 against the accredited number of voters uh, by, captured by uh, uh, the card reader, which was less than 3,000, and they returned 64,000 votes. And I, I remember you were asking the man who was saying that whether uh, he was uh, INEC, whether he conducted the election. I can tell you that, yes, he did, because he compromised every process and then went and wrote result from that is local government bringing 64,000 votes. And Who compromised pro the process? The, the right on, on making it your hand there uh, and Imo PDP. And the stage was set by Ray. How did he compromise the process? He compromised the process because the, the cadre that recorded 3,000 registered voters that came out to, less than 3,000 actually, they came out to vote. But he returned 64,000 votes. I don't know from where he got it, so that compromised the process. So was and there any ruling that said he compromised the process? Was there any, we don't need any ruling. I said the card reader, you can find that. And you know the interesting thing is that uh, you, your channel announced the results. And so when... But, but we didn't announce that he compromised the process. No, 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 you announced the result. You announced this figure I'm mentioning. So whether, whether you announced it, but if, if card reader said you had less than 3,000 registered voters who came out to vote and he returned 64,000, they definitely don't need anybody to tell you that the thing was compromised. But above that, more, more interestingly, you know, they, they were talking about, Ray said that in, in uh, Oru East, the, the local government of my, my, my governor, uh, distinguished senator Obu that, uh, that APC lost in that local government. He said that, and that is not true. Check your own record. From the <laughs> announcement, APC won the presidential election, won the governorship in Oru East, and they, uh, they, they won by 24,000 votes. I, I think it's very important to go back to where the conversation started from. I know that you want to respond to what you might perceive to be, uh, you want to clarify certain things that were said here on the program. But where we started from uh -huh. uh, was this uh, conversation on the person who has gone to court Good. to stop beavers. Yes, yes. Uh, and that's something that is of grave concern to a lot of Nigerians because yes. beavers has been hailed as the innovation uh, that has been brought into this uh, 2023 elections exactly. and hopefully will make it a little more transparent uh, than when we ha had the card readers. So if we're beginning to hear that somebody is going to court to try and stop the use of card reader, everybody is rightly disturbed. Now, the accusation that has now come is that your governor is the one who is sponsoring the person who is trying to, you know, scuttle the use of the, of the Beavers uh, machine. Now, um, it, I do not know first and foremost if you want to respond to that because what we've also heard is that your state, I think from, it has come from your state that, oh, it's not the governor, oh, but the immediate past governor of the state uh, who is trying, right, Honorable Emeka Ehedioha, who is trying to, and he 
I think he's, he was the one who said, you know, he doesn't have any interest. It, it, it should be people who are currently standing for re-election, etc., uh, who will have that sort of interest. Well, I mean, that's, the, that's the, one of the greatest fallacies. Because if there is anybody who wants beavers to be used, I think it should be um, our government and the, uh, our governor. Because practical example, we had a by-election in Ngobala. Beavers were used, and P APC won, defeated PDP, hands down. Beavers were used. So why should we be afraid of beavers? So, and then since, since we came on board, we have had two by-elections, Okigwe Senatorial Zone, APC won. And in each case, they removed PDP in, in the Ngobala House uh, State uh, Constituency elections. APC won, and they, they removed PDP. So, and, you know, in, particularly in Ngobala, beavers were used, and we won. Now, so when anybody tells you that uh, we don't want beavers, I don't know how. At any event, the person you mentioned who went to court, I issued a statement on that when that came out. The person is a lady who went and took the, the uh, stamp of office of his colleague. And the, the man is a, sorry, is a lawyer. He came out openly to say, this lady came and took my stamp of office and said she lost her own, I wants to do a land deal for somebody. And use that stamp of office to go and file this this uh, court matter about beavers, and that he is not aware of it and is illegal. And we trace that lady to be an associate of uh, Right Honourable Making Yodra. So they went to court. That was why they were the first. They said there is a secret court case. How do you know there is a secret court case if you if you didn't uh, if you were not part of it originally? They were the people who uh, who mentioned it. Say secret court case, and then you are turning around to. To blame, uh, to blame the governor. Okay, so, Mr. So. Professor, what do you think of what's going on? All right, for you to make sense of what is happening in Imo State today, you must refer back to the election in 2019, which Senator Hopos or the man never won. So we have an Ill Ill illegitimate government in Imo State. For instance, in the build up to the 2019 governorship election, there were, there were two or three major outings that governorship candidates undertook. One was the debates organized by BBC. Two was another debate organized by Imo community in, Euro in Europe at Rockview Hotels. And the third was the one organized by Imo Elders Advisory Council. Senator Hopu Zodema never participated in any of those debates. He was never seen in any campaign rally. He never participated in the election. And he deservedly came distant fourth in the election. And the unduly, the Supreme Court imposed him on Imo people. And you need to know the political culture of the Igbos. Check through our history. Igbo people have relentlessly resisted imposition of political authority. You know about the Ekumeko uprisings of Anioma people. You know about the Arrow Wars against the colonial masters. You know about the Aba Women Riot. They were all efforts and attempts by Igbo people to express themselves that they are naturally and they are unrepentantly democratic, acephalous, and republican. And today in Imo, you have a government that never came through the ballot. You have a government that the people never elected. Therefore, the umbilical cord, the symbiotic relationship that should exist between the government and the people is totally absent. That is one of the situations. Also, in view of the imposition of Senator Hopu Zodema as a governor of Imo State, he has not justified the mandate which he got through the court. I'm coming. Excuse me, I'm coming. He has not justified the mandate. For instance, let me shock you. Imo State in the last 31 months has gotten a total of 631.4 billion naira. This is a sum total of... I'm, com how I'm coming you, to how that. How did you get that figure? Thank you so much. Eh? The fact allocations to the state, about 153 billion. Allocations to the local government, 127 billion. IGR, 31 billion. You have the... You have the uh, the 13% derivation to the uh, in view of the OU we have in Imo State, which is almost about 29 billion. And other interventions, about 90 billion, that's the SDGs and the UBEC, that's 400 billion. And he has also obtained loans, totaling about 233.4 billion. So now you have about 633.4 billion naira mismanaged in the last 31 months by Governor Hope. No, Miss, it, it, how, why you say it's mismanaged? Thank you very much. Because get to Imo State today, you cannot see a single project that justified that such humongous amount has come to Imo State. For instance, in September 2021, he brought President Muhammad Buhari to commission an uncompleted project in Iagwa, Naked the Road. And when we shouted, he said, no, it's just the first phase. 
President Muhammad Buhari left. That road was not completed. In September 2022, he again brought President Muhammad Buhari to commission an uncompleted Owere Okigwe road. We shouted again, said it will be completed. The one of last year has not been completed. He brought President Muhammad, I'm coming, he brought President Muhammad Buhari again to commission a project that was done 30 years ago by De Samon Bakwa, our iconic leader. He repented an old House of Assembly complex. I'm telling you, for you to understand the level of disease going on in Imo State, well, Senator Hope you, Uzodima brought the Vice President of the Federal yeah. Republic of Nigeria. You raised repented. a lot of issues. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'll get to that. He needs to respond to... I'm not, I'm no, coming, I'm not landed, I'm not landed. Mm. He brought the Vice President of Nigeria, repented an old and abandoned property at Amako here in Oweri, and said, Kumbaya, everybody, I have established a garment-making factory in Imo State. He went and procured eight sewing machines put in the old building. Vice President of Nigeria commissioned that building. 24 hours later, he removed all the sewing machines and shut down the place. That is the level of disease that is so going wait, on in Imo. At this point, at this time, moment, there is, there is no garment making. There is no garment making factory in Imo. And then remember again, relevant rating boards have always scored Imo poor in terms of development. Imo occupies the top positions in all the indices of social misery in Nigeria. For instance, today NBS has classified us as the unemployment capital of Nigeria, with 83% of youth completely out of job. Remember today, one in every five Imo women has issues with cancer. The government of Senator mm. Hopus Odema has not, I'm coming, the government of Senator Hopus Odema okay. has not established yeah. even a well, single cancer mm. screening center in the, in the state. The so he has not justified yeah. the homogos. So, don't worry, just hang on. You, 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 I have not made the point I need to make. For instance, eh, in the face of the legitimacy crisis of Senator Hopus Odema, and his inability to justify the mandate he has Let him respond to some of the ones you raised. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, thank you very much. You know, it's unfortunate, very unfortunate that PDP has decided to live in self-denial. First and foremost, I don't know why you have not interrogated PDP people to ask them, did they make him or her win the governorship election in 2019? He did not. He did not meet the constitutional requirement. Now, I'm coming, sir. Well, I'm, coming, sir. Malibar, I'm coming, sir. No, 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 no. Excuse me, sir. When he was talking about it, please, no, you have to allow me. To, if it's a factual matter, it's a factual have to matter. I'm making a factual he matter. He was declared winner. No, 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 no. He was declared winner. Illegally, because he didn't meet the constitutional but requirement, and that was why the court removed him. I'm coming. Don't don't tell me he was the declared winner. He I was declared winner. Ainek that's a fact. No, I didn't. will tell that. Yes, that, that but I has declared people who didn't win election. So you can't say what you didn't tell. No, that is the essence of court. So address so, the issues. Yes, that I'm did. addressing it. So yeah. first of all, PDP committed vicious brutalization of the constitution, and they need to apologize to more people. Have they ever told you the spread? How the result? How did he win? So when you didn't win an well, election, then I don't know, because it's, excuse me, sir, no, 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 right excuse now. me, sir, he said he called the hopes with the mass government illegitimate, and he don't want me to talk about, about the, the crime they committed against the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That's not fair now. And now when you talk about, he, he was saying that uh, 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 hopes has not done this. Now, I want you to check. Mekin Hedioha was in government for seven months. Within that seven months, by June 20. 19. But, uh, uh, what Look, he, he's no, no, raised, you're interrupting the, me so much. No, 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 no. There I don't, is a sitting I don't, governor I don't, right I, now. Yes, for, this for, issue is not about uh, Michael Hedio. No, but, but he's spoken there about is no way I can talk about the sitting governor without referring I, to I, what he I'm said. And he gave him, he gave him time. He gave him, he gave him. public secretary of Yes, and the commissioner for information of the Therefore, we have to tell you what is going on in the project. And actually, Hedio is not the governor of Imo State. He's not the governor of Imo State. So, let's talk about Imo State. Okay, just hold on. Respond to the issue. Now, I'm telling you that because you're talking about debt profile and so on. Mm -hmm. By June 2019, Imo State had a debt profile of 148 billion. That was before making it came came in. By December 2019, when he had said about six months, just about four, a few days before he was removed, Imo State debt profile climbed to 204 billion. That, that means, please, no, no, these are just facts. Just hold on, you respond. These are facts. No, 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 no. You if, respond if, to if, it. If he doesn't want, if he doesn't want this in the, excuse me. Any day you advise just hold on. take a loan, hold on. You, you respond, don't worry, you respond, just hold on. to be a civilized discourse, then we can go haywire if he wants. Civilized discussions are not just hang on, just hang on, just hold on. Just hold on, hold on, so we'll make it decent, please, go ahead. He borrowed 48 billion within six months. Do you have the documents? Yes, I have the documents. Money? Google it is everywhere. Secondly, now, but within that same period, he's, he embezzled 19 billion of local government for audit report of government is there. 
He, said, he claimed he was building stadiums. So there was absolutely no single project. Is there available audit report? Yes, there is. There is. He we don't allow we... us to come here with documents. I, 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 my phone. Who said we don't allow? Who no, told you that? All of the they're in my phone. They, they move my Your phone. Your phone. Yes, of course. No, you can't bring phones to the studio. Yeah, so, if you knew you were coming to the program, yes, should have so, brought those hard copies. No, 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 no. no. I, I mean, I don't need hard copies. I would, show, I would have shown you. you know, no, we, we have to see the hard copies. No, no. You brought. You said you no, knew you were coming. But go ahead, Chamberlain. I want to plead with you. Know you are from Imo State. Eh? That yes. what has happened no, has everything anything. to do. I hope you are not an interested party because the way you are interjecting and interrupting me, I well, don't like uh, it. For the orders no, of that, Mr. Benoba, yes, please, he has please, raised, please. he has leveled. And he won't allow me to talk. Why? Because you why, don't why would he allow me to address talk? the issues. No, I'm addressing the issues. I, you don't tell me whether I'm addressing the issues or not. You should allow I can me to tell talk. you that. No, no, no. If no, we no, ask you a question, you have to answer school. it. I'm not in the school. If you don't want to answer the question, we go ahead to the next program. So go ahead. Fine. So I'm saying that within that period, he embezzled 19 billion of Imo State people's money. Ask him, what is the single project that they did within seven months? Our government built, has built over 100 and something rules. It is an insult to say that the president came to commission on completed projects. The president gets advice. He gets advice before he comes to commission projects in Imo State. People go, his, his team goes to assess. All right, well, and, we're, and, and, no, we're due for a break. But the we will come back. Commission. You haven't responded to some of the issues that are raised about those other factories, but we're due for a break which, now. Which factories? Well, I'm, I'm coming to that. We I'm will come back that. in a moment, and you'll respond to, to those yes, issues, fine, fine, and then fine. he will equally speak yeah. to them. Please join us again. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, just getting some information uh, that uh, the media passed wreck, Professor Emeka Izionu is being investigated by INEC concerning the matters that were reported uh, about the so-called snatching of beavers and the likes, which is out there in the news, but that's a different matter entirely. But, Mr. Menoba, you're making a point as to the uh, issue he raised yes, concerning yes. whether or not, as yes. we speak, there's yes. a garment factory no, operating. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you're so much interested in the garment factory alone, mm -hmm. because you also talked about uncompleted rules that he claimed to be commissioned. However, if you're interested in the garment factory, I invite you to where you come there. The garment factory is there, is working. I can invite you. I pay. I pay your ticket. If you come and you don't see, it, then you know that now. I'm not interested uh, in anything whatsoever. Oh, good, please, so just it go is ahead. working. They, 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 they just tell lies, like like children. So I don't. I don't. I'm not surprised. I said the governor fixed a road over there, Tolo, which has been perennially abandoned by previous administrations, and the president came and commissioned that road, and the president was impressed. He also president commissioned the uh, uh, over there to Okigwe. Uh, ending at Amarak Junction. The president was impressed. He commissioned a dilapidated, completely dilapidated, with, with the, if you check here this thing, when the, the, that commission was happening, we, we put an uh, advert here and showed the carcass that was the House of Assembly in Imo State and what the governor did. Turned it around, completely built it and commissioned it. And he's saying it's an old, this, what, okay, what, what, during their tenure, House of Assembly members were not sitting there, they abandoned the place because it was a, a health risk. The, the roofs caved in, nobody could sit there. The governor came and fixed it and put state-of-the-art modern gadgets, or, uh, communication gadgets, and commissioned it. And the president, pre, President Buhari was so impressed that after what he did, he told the governor, you are talking of road revolution, but I'm telling you what, that what they are doing is infrastructural revolution. Now, if you are talking about Imo State, if you go by uh, statistics, Imo is fifth in terms of GDP growth in, in the whole uh, 36 states. It's 11th in terms of ease of doing business in the whole of 36 states. It is fifth again in terms of uh, IGR generation in, uh, 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 and, and the richest uh, 10 states is number five in terms of IGR generation. Now, we have rehabilitated unemployment. Unemployment, we, we have, we, the, this government empowered, trained, and uh, equipped youths in the different skills and empowered over 15,000 youths within the period we have been there. So, unemployment, this one is, every day I've had him so many times talking of unemployment capital. You know, it's easy to talk anything you want to talk. Nobody will stop you, but it's, it's not a fact. I'm interested, uh, I'm interested in the fact that you just talked about, um, how do I put it now, you just talked about, uh, the loans, and you, you claim that they borrowed some money. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, sorry, the, for the previous governor borrowed some money whilst he was in office. However, this controversy on loan didn't just come up today. Yeah. Um, it would seem that there has been a back and forth before now on this issue of loans, uh, where there has been a dispute over how much 
to, to what tune is the Imo State government indebted? Uh, from what you know, yeah, the Commissioner for Information, to what tune would you say that the Imo State government is indebted? As of June this year, June 2022, Imo State debt profile is 210 billion. Why do you say June? Why not today? As well, of today? Well, no, that statistics is not uh, readily available. I'm sure that they, we, we wouldn't have it as of today. You know? So as of June 2022, that's this year, which is just a few months uh, away, the debt profile is uh, 210 billion. Now, this government has... Uh, uh, you know why I'm raising this? Yes. Because apparently it's been a sore point uh, for, for your government and the previous government in, in office. At that time, you did not accuse, when you responded to the accusations which were raised at a forum, I think was outside of this country, or it was being hosted by a group of people, you did not say that, oh, but you borrowed some money as well. You didn't bring up this issue of $40 billion, which, you, which, which you claim, no, that, that, was not, that was not reported? Well, it was reported. It was reported in newspapers, at least. I did. I did. And I have the cuttings of the report. I did. Because there's no way we could have addressed that without... This, this is a fact. Yeah. By the time they, they came in within their uh, seven months in office, the debt profile was 148 billion. Within six months, it climbed to 204. So they borrowed money. Mm -hmm. and, how much, and what did they you, do with the money? How much did you say it currently stands at? It's 210. I mean, 210. So maybe uh, uh, an, uh, an addition of about uh, 9 billion or thereabout. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what, the important thing is what did they do with the money? Within seven months that uh, uh, Right Honorable Making Head of was in Can office, he was point? traveling every month I, I, outside what? the country. Mm -hmm. And within seven months that he was in government, all he did was to expand and consolidate his personal estates. In, in a way, and in the village, he sacked Those the accusations. Village. Yeah. I, I want to quickly read something yeah. to you here. Okay. Uh, this is from a, a newspaper. Imo, Akwaibom Rivers, uh, this, is, uh, this is actually Cross River State, recorded over 50% unemployment rates. This was as at uh, sometime in March 2021. Yes. These, are some of the, these are some of the statistics that we're seeing right here. Imo. Um, always is mentioned when unemployment is mentioned yeah, in Nigeria yeah, yeah. as one of the worst ranking states. Yeah, but, but Are you aware of that? Yeah, I'm aware. But Do you accept is, that? No, 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 no. The question is, what was the situation when we came in? The situation was worse. We have been addressing it. That's why it's going down. Mm. It's going down every day. I, I'm telling you, right now, just last week, the, the, the governor is the first uh, state in, in Nigeria that has uh, established a digital economy ministry. Mm. And last week, we, 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 we launched the digital economy employment. The, in the next, this, this in the next six months, we are going yeah. to employ 1,000 youths. Uh, uh, okay, economy. well, I wish that you would be able to put a figure to how, how many youths you have unemployed and how, what you're hoping to reduce it by. Well, let me come uh, to your counterpart here on the program this morning. Um, I am just wondering, it, it, will it be kind? Oh, maybe kindness is not the word now. Will it be factual to say that, oh, somebody just put paint over a building and, and commissioned it. Is that really, really what happened or was it refurbished? Was it uh, rehabilitated and refurbished to the point where they could invite a president to commission it or vice president? A lot of lies have been said here and I wouldn't want to start talking about them. Let us face the facts and discuss Imo the way it is today. For instance, I was making a point that in view of the failures of this government of Senator Hopo Zodema to account for the 633.4 billion naira that has accrued to the state in the last 31 months. And there's this disenchantment and rising resentment in the state. It has now resorted to all manner of things to contain the situation. And part of it is forgery. The man seated right beside me was the one that contracted I'm somebody. I asked a question. No, you, I'm no, I will, no, 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 I will, no. I will You haven't you. answered my okay, question, okay. and I need you to answer that okay. question. I will, answer the, I will answer the question in a very simple way. Yeah. Senator Hopu Zodema repainted an, uh, an old building built by Dei Samon Bakwe in 1983. I'm saying, I'm just a moment. Okay. Indeed, that building might have existed. Yes. But I'm saying, is it factual to say that somebody just put paint over it? Was the building in use? When you know pe people started, when it was when it was repainted, was it in use? The, Has it been in use for the thank past you very how much. many years? The only moment that existence? the building was not in use was the period that they asked House of Assembly members to move out so that it could be repainted. Mm. That's a fact. But I'm coming. It's my moment. Then let's look at what's going no, on. Just a moment. The, let okay. me clarify this. Are okay. you saying then that members of the House of Assembly sat in that particular building 
whilst for, I mean for the six months that uh, definitely that is def yeah, that is the fact. So can you can you mm. calm can, so. can you okay. calm down? Just can you calm down? The, yes, the, that's the, the fact. So I think yeah. with what I just said now, the issue of House of Assembly has been settled. Can I now go on with other issues? As I said to this, it's settled. Everybody knows that. I have the moment, please. I have the last eight years. Go and verify. I have the moment, please. Let him let him respond. Okay, okay. Now, in the face of the failures of the government. The government of Senator Hopu Zodima has now resorted to all manner of contrivances to contend the political tension in the state, especially the rising resentment against his regime, which, of course, you know, is illegitimate. And part of what they have resorted to now is to clone voices and forge letters of prominent leaders of the Just opposition. Just a moment. You continue to say that Governor Hopu Zodima's government is illegitimate. Oh, As if he is the first governor that the Supreme Court has declared a winner. There are many governors, I mean, in our history, on our new That came forth in an election? Just a moment. There are, new, there are governors in our democratic dispensation uh, who felt aggrieved, went to the court, and, you know, their, their mandates were, re, will I say, restored. Yeah. When you continue to say that. that, just a moment, when okay. you continue to say that, you continue to cast aspersions on the Supreme Court of Nigeria. I hope you're aware of that. No. It was Senator Hopu Zodema that sat in the seat of power of Imo State and said, the process that brought me here was a Ben Johnson way. I came in through the Ben Johnson way. I have it, I will tender it right away. So, so he was the one that government. called himself an illegitimate governor who came in through the shortcut. So nobody is wrong to describe Hopu Zodema I'm as an I'm just saying governor. that when you continue to he say that, he called himself a governor that aware. came in through the Ben Johnson way. So I am not wrong in calling him a governor that came in through the Ben Johnson way. He is he's aware of this. They tried to manage the backlash then, but they failed because it was on national television. Therefore, in, in view of the fact that the government has failed, they have now resorted to all manner of contrivances, one of which is to fabricate story. For instance, the letter that they claimed that, uh, that uh, the right on Rebbe Meki Hedion had wrote to Malami was fabricated by him at number 12 Yuba Street, you know where. The boy that he gave contract to do that right, had um, confessed that he will even return the 200,000 he was paid. Well, gentlemen, friend, I'm afraid we need to go. We're out of time. So, uh, yes, we've exceeded true. way more than that. Um, pardon me, even my colleagues in Lagos couldn't even come in. Okay. All right, well, okay, guys, uh, they have a question or two for you. Go ahead, guys. Well, perhaps just one or two questions, Chamberlain. Um, let me ask uh, Mr., uh, you know, the Commissioner for Information. You know, uh, all of these things that we're talking about is essentially about performance of government at various levels and how, you know, useful those things are to the people of the state. I I'm looking at the State of the State's report, you know, that was re released for this year by uh, budget and in that report they say that the, the state's performance uh, on the state's performance ranking Imo State came 26th with a 3.91 index uh, essentially uh, this one is talking about uh, how the, the states either need to work harder on growing their internally generated revenue considering the size of their operating expenses or work on pruning their operating expenses. Uh, is this a report coming 26th on the list uh, out of 36 states? Is this something that the state government is concerned about, accept or reject? Of course, we, we totally reject it. You know, uh, these reports, uh, I, I don't know the one you're quoting, they come uh, here and there, left, right. It is the state of, it is the uh, state you know, of states reports by budget for 2022. Don't, don't, don't by who? Budgets. By budget. B budget. Budget. Yes. Uh, in fact, ask budget, they even apologize to us because we took it up, up with them. Find out. They apologize to us. I have it. That they, they, they erroneously put us there. That budget, they find out from them. We took it up with them, and they, they found out that they said they made a mistake. And I'm saying it here. If it is not true, please let them. They made a mistake in, in, in the ranking, in, the, in our placement. That is, in is, all of the no, the one that concerns Imo. They admitted no, 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 that. Very yes. Well, the, the, whatever ranking they use, what he quoted. Because you've talked about ease of doing business. Yes, ease of doing you, business. You say that you're number, five. You're, yes. you're number five in, 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 in Nigeria. Is that not what yes, you said? Yes, that's what I said. Well, they say you're number 11. No, no, no. I, no, I said ease of doing business, we are number 11. GDP growth, we are number five. And the IGR uh, generation, we are number five. That's what I said. Number 11. Number 11, out of that. They say you're that, number 11. Yeah, that's what yes, I'm asking. That's, yes, With which correct. particular index here would you say that they were wrong? I mean, you have no, to be able said, to say which said, particular said, one you raised said, with he them. He said here 
that they ranked us 26th mm -hmm. of uh, 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 26 uh, uh, out of that six states in terms of performance, in terms of uh, this. And I said, it is not true. Because budget recanted the, uh, the, the, the statement they made. I have it on record. <laughs> and in fact, the person who uh, 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 reported it, uh, we, we were able to get through to him and presented him with the facts. And they, 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 they refuted it. And I have it on record. I can forward it to you if I, when I live here. Well, uh, we, we, we have. Okay, your final word. Just a few seconds because we need to go. Also, give me final word. You just spoke now. No, no, no. That's few seconds. My final okay. word. Thank I responded so to a question. The reality on ground in Imo is that the government of Senator Hopo Zodema has dismantled the foundations of good governance put in place by, put in place by our party. All right, gentlemen, we need to go. My final uh, word to you. Declan Emanomba, yes. Commissioner for Information, yes. Imo State, uh, Colin Zoporozo, Publicity Secretary, PDP Imo State. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on. We will be back in just a moment. Join us again.